I'm after how it feels to paint that thing that in that way. In that yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I'm not in the mood for the vines. So <laughs> and then I go to this other thing because it's a different way of handling the paint. That so feels. why did you do that with the dandelions? And then what I love about this painting too, it's a perfect example is there's the dandelions. And why don't you talk about how you arrived at that? The, those square the colors. Patches. Yeah, those square patches come from a sponge roller. Okay. And the roller comes from the idea of whiting out graffiti. Fine, radically fine now if they do not white out their graffiti. I did not know that. So you don't see any graffiti anymore, at least you up just and down. Those. Yeah, you just see those marks. And they're really compelling because nobody's getting the paint match right. You know, it's right, all right, right. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, painters are definitely not. No, they're, they're not. They're <laughs> colorblind is what they are. So, so you get these sometimes approximations, but mostly they're really just these stark, uh, kind of indigenous designs. I mean, to where you find yourself thinking whatever it was you covered up was probably more aesthetically pleasing than that thing. Well, you, but the, the cover-ups are so interesting to me, and so that's how I arrived But that's at, a wall, that. that's not sky. Well, right, but you can do that to a sky, too. Well, you can. You, yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> You can do that to a spot. My, my greatest attribute, and I think as a painter, I would say specifically as a painter, is that I'm a natural hallucinator. So I just put down this Did everybody catch that natural hallucinator? I am. And I just put down the background, and I just keep sitting there and sitting there until I go, oh, that's... It's a kind of meditation, which yeah, I know, it is. not to out you as a meditator to a bunch of strangers, but I know you devote a great deal of your time and psychic energy to a meditation practice. It is very much and like a meditation. You do, you do that. And yeah, it is very much like a meditation. And then I like so much this idea of making something that's pretty nearly perfect, but that gets foiled, that gets really kind of twisted up. Well, like for example in this one, yeah. the marks on the ground. I have in my imagination, after all these paintings are created, I have definitely a narrative, but I don't have the narrative going in. The one thing okay. just describes to me the other thing that needs to come up. So within each canvas. Yeah. Right? So yeah. something needs to come up on that funny looking background and oh wouldn't that be interesting I saw those out of Joshua Tree I have a photo of them so I think yeah okay so I can put those in I don't know how to paint them but I can give it a shot somehow I'll figure out how to do that and then when they're finished I think well you know you can't just have them like that so you get out the roller and you start defacing the painting somehow foiling it foiling it and and it makes it much more realistic to me in a way to you Right, because with your hallucinogenic, itinerant, <laughs> free wheeling, free bird. Does anyone know free bird? Gypsy thing. Right, right. And it feels very correct to me. It feels very appropriate to me. And um, so it, it's uh, there. Very little. There's little known to me going in. But then I catch on to them, and they get kind of interesting. But I, for example, I wouldn't make five paintings based on those images. No. I couldn't do it. Well, you might. I mean, there's there's other paintings that do have. Right, but I wouldn't say, do, hey, Lisa, do five paintings of dandelions. No. There is a lexicon of things that I prefer. I prefer um, certain natural elements, of course. The, the flowers, the, the flowers. flowers. What's with the vine? Well, I think of the vines as more of a desperation idea. Really? See, yeah. I would guess that if you talk about Yeah, the, the vines, I mean, if you watch them kind of in nature, you see these poor little things jetting out, just trying to climb Thorny, somewhere, cloying, trying to wrangle themselves for around them. some stability. So they can string them stable. Yeah, but yeah. Well, sometimes they do, this and sometimes is, they don't. Yeah. But they're but they're really um, they're these desperate but beautiful little elements that are really reaching to ground themselves onto something. For else. example, that painting right there, the way it just it's not particularly overbearing. I mean, in other words, you talk about that, and I notice the one tiny little flick of the vine around the beak of the bird. Yeah. When really the subject is this tornado, this destructive. Right, but, but so they'd all like that. to do I mean, that. just made it go. They'd all like to do that. All those minds would to like to do bird. that, but one got lucky, so. That's <laughs> 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 Graffiti, the word albedo, so it's a tag. This is superimposed on a picture for the glacier and the sea, and the and it has ref and the painting is called We Destroyed the Things We Love. 
And it seems to me remarkable because it's the only sort of, first of all, there's text, which is rare for you. And second of all, it's the only overtly kind of political piece, overtly political piece in the show because it's, hey, check it out. The glacier melts, the water's more reflective than the glacier. That means that the water that used to be a glacier that's now the water reflects the sunlight to an even greater degree, which further heats up. And so there is a um, seemingly upbeat and buoyant quality because the work is colorful, it's quite hours crafted, it's, it's uh, there's flowers and it's cheerful, but there is an undercurrent for sure about uh, um, this kind of dystopian idea. Uh, this little painting here is called 10 Seconds and Counting, which is sort of like if that were to go for another 10 seconds, it would be lights out, right? For I mean, all for this painting, this paint dripping at the top would okay. completely cover cover the surface of the painting. So there would be no more image. And the image is a cotyledon, which is the very first leaves that come from this small sprout um, of a new kind of birth plant. There's a painting um, uh, back here with this little city in the bottom right the, corner, right, very Mondrian-esque, right, and, and it's called Memories of Shandigar. And Shandigar is a um, was a Le, Le Corbusier project in the 1950s, and it was built in Shandigar, um, India, and it still exists today. You've been there. I have not been there. Okay. This You've is, been to India. I have not been to India. Really, but Shandigar is interesting to me insofar as. I love high modernism, mm -hmm. and it's built in a developing country, and it's very now tawdry and sort of decaying. And so you have this high modernist idea and design that is kind of disintegrating and falling apart. Is really a fascinating idea to me. So this is my my um, idea about Shandigar. Really good art is not, I can, you can, anybody can come to an artwork and begin projecting. The so birds your, are very your, good your relative painted these birds, right? Mm -hmm. Natural history. So I, I don't have that, and probably no one else out there has that, right? Okay. But the idea that you can come to an artwork that is open enough that it prompts your imagination with a few key things, that you can make up your own narratives for them. And so you're not attached. I mean, because your titles are very evocative. Yeah, I have my own ideas, ideas, for sure. But you're not, it's not important to you important. whether people follow your train of thought. Not, in fact, I wish they wouldn't, because <laughs> I already know what I think. I'd like to hear what other people think, mm -hmm. right? I, yeah. Well, that's a great set. I mean, you know, I mean, we have more stuff we could go on forever, but I would like to know what other people think, too. Do you have a title in your mind when you're painting, or nothing? Pretty much nothing. <clears throat> um, just Although you've got some great ones. I mean, that's a good question. But you've got some really good titles. Yeah, but usually the narratives take hold well after the painting is completed. Occasionally, a title or a word would come to my mind, occasionally, while I'm Before, making the painting, while. while I'm making it. Yes. But I, you know, I prefer not to know very much, because if I knew what the result would be, it wouldn't be that interesting to me. I, it, it, to know very little feels much more compelling, and it keeps me in there, and it keeps me painting. I mean, you know, anyone who paints in this room knows that painting is ultimately about the most solitary task I can think of. And you're in it with this thing, and this thing then really is a projection of you. And once that starts to take hold, it's a fascinating concept because you're really looking in a mirror the whole time. But is there a, is there a kind of gap after you finish the painting before the title comes? A big or, gap. Or, or is it? A, a big gap, usually. Oh, yes, yes. and, and sometimes, you know, the truth of the matter is 